Hey, Bob here again from LightGenius.com. Had to move inside today. Not nice outside here in the Vancouver area. This week's video is going to be about shutter priority and when to use it, when not to use it, and why. I'm sure you're all familiar with the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle shows the three functions of the camera that are used to get proper exposure. First is the ISO, which is the sensitivity of the sensor itself. In other words, what amount of light would the camera need to get proper exposure? The second is the shutter speed, or how long will we allow the light to enter the camera? And third, aperture, or how big will we make the hole for the light to enter? All of these functions can be adjusted to get just the right amount of light into the camera for proper exposure. Now these exposures can be done solely by the camera or we can do some of them or all of them ourselves. Each of these three functions has a totally different effect on our image and it's important that we learn or understand what those effects are. ISO can reduce or increase the image quality. If we go to a higher ISO it creates more digital noise which can deteriorate the quality. Shutter speed can blur or freeze camera or subject movement. And the aperture can increase or decrease the amount of our image that's actually in focus. So that means that the aperture can be a very creative function. Now our cameras will set all of three of these for us if we so desire. That's called full auto. The camera makes all of the decisions. We can also ask the camera to just adjust one or two of those functions and leave the rest to us. Let's call these settings semi-automatic as we're having the camera make the final calculations for exposure, but give us some control. These semi-automatic settings are a great way to learn the effects of the different functions on your image. And you could, for example, if you were adjusting just the aperture, you could see the different effects that the aperture has and you don't have to worry about exposure because the camera has taken over those other functions to give you proper exposure. In last week's video, which was camera settings auto modes, I explained the, the importance of getting consistent and as close to perfect exposure as possible in camera. I also said that when I'm walking about with my camera and I'm not sure what my next shot is going to be, that I would use usually have my camera set to shutter priority. So I'm going to explain why I choose that particular mode. In one of the semi-automatic settings, you can adjust just the shutter yourself and let the camera do the rest. This is called shutter priority. Or you can adjust just the, the aperture and let the camera do the rest. This is called aperture priority. Now normally I shoot everything in manual mode because most of the time I know what settings I need to get the results that I want. But then I've been doing this since I was 11 years old and that was months ago. My main exception for not using manual is when I'm not sure if my next shot is going to be a moving target or something that's sitting still, if it's in the shade or in the sunshine, if it's backlit or frontlit or if it's close, far away, or if it's something that's just a fleeting moment, or something that will give me time to actually make adjustments. Because I'm not sure, I don't want to miss a shot, just because I'm not ready. I'm an old boy scout, so I believe in that being prepared. Okay, let's take the different modes. If I'm in full auto mode, my camera can choose an ISO that's too high, and give me digital noise and loss of image quality. In full automatic it can also choose a very slow shutter speed and cause camera or subject movement. For me full auto is really never a consideration. I just never have my camera on full auto. Now if I use the semi-auto mode of aperture priority my, I, I now have control of my ISO. I can either set it myself or I can set a maximum to not allow the ISO to go higher than I wish. But 
The aperture mode can still choose a slow shutter speed that could ruin a potentially great picture with camera movement or subject movement. And I hate blurry pictures. Now in shutter priority, I not only can set the ISO or control the ISO, but I also can set the shutter speed at a speed that will eliminate most camera or subject movement. Many photographers prefer aperture priority. They want control of the artistic part of controlling how much is in focus, how much is not in focus, and I appreciate that. But first and foremost to me is to get a nice, sharp, well-exposed picture. Creativity has to come second to having a quality image. Okay, here's a caution. When you're using auto mode or the semi-auto modes, the camera can be fooled by all but the most ideal of conditions. So for heaven's sakes, after the first couple of images that you've shot, check your histogram, make sure that you're getting the results that you want, that the area of the image that's important to you is exposed properly. If the results aren't what you hope for, you can do one of two things. You can either use the settings that the camera's auto setting used as a guide and set your camera to manual and adjust that. Or even simpler is to use the exposure compensation to either add or subtract some brightness. When not to use shutter priority, if you can eliminate the potential problem of slow shutter, uh, by having your camera on a tripod, for instance, if you're not in a panic to take the picture and you have some time to make adjustments, then you could go to an aperture priority or full auto or manual. My walkabout settings are to have the camera in shutter priority with the shutter set at one two hundredth of a second. That eliminates most uh, potential camera or subject movement. If it's in the daytime and it's sunshine, I usually have my ISO at 100. Uh, if it's cloudy or going into the evening, I step it up to about 400 ISO. I let the camera take care of the aperture and the white balance. To make sure that you don't miss next week's video, which will be on aperture priority, just subscribe to our channel by clicking right here. Also, if you uh, could, I'd appreciate if you give us a thumbs up and that'll let me know if I'm going in the right direction with these videos. By the way, a quick note on flash photography. The easiest way to improve your flash photography instantly is by adding a light scoop to your hot shoe flash. Not only does it keep the light higher than the lens in both portrait and landscape mode, but you get this kind of result instead of this. Thanks for watching. See you next week.